It's the same old story 24 hours later, just with some new comments. Zeke Watch does continue. Zeke Elliott hasn't reported to Cowboys camp, and we still haven't heard from him, but Cowboys owner Jerry Jones did speak again and said that as the season draws closer, he's looking towards December and January. Listen, uh, we've got a marathon here, and we want Zeke when we get to the playoffs. We want Zeke when we're uh, in the uh, uh, dog days of this season. We have to be prepared to... Uh, uh, play without any given player. That's just a given. That's not unusual business in the NFL. And uh, we may very well play without a player that is uh, uh, not coming in on his contract. So if that's the case, we'll just play. And we'll play, and we'll play well. Okay, so Jerry Jones is making it seem as though he won't need Zeke or won't miss him until the playoffs. And he's sort of putting an optimistic spin on the fact that Zeke is not with the team. What kind of leverage does Zeke have left, Nate? He still has all the leverage. Uh, I know it, it seems um, contrary seems like it's to dwindling, what, though. It, it is dwindling a little bit. And it, it seems contrary to what Jerry Jones is saying. But what he said at the end, he said, "If that's the case, we'll play and we'll play well." Who says you'll play well without Zeke if Zeke doesn't show up? Now, I get it. Optimistically speaking, if you're Jerry Jones, if you're the Cowboys, Garrett, all the way down to the new offense coordinator, Kellen Moore, you're thinking to yourself, we have some young talent surrounding Dak and the wide receiver and Amari Cooper that can hold down the fort until we get all this worked out. But we opened up the show with Emmitt Smith. Yeah. When Emmitt Smith held out, the team struggled. Then all of a sudden... He got paid. He got paid. Hey, Emmitt, come on. Let me give you this big bag of money. So the leverage is there because... Even though they have guys that can collectively bring together what Zeke does individually, but if they don't do that from game to game, then yeah, Zeke still has the leverage. Now that Emmett, that the Emmett team is? though was a talented one though, Nate. Way this more talented than this one. Exactly. Exactly. So and what, and, what did, and what did Jerry Jones do with Emmett? He sent him packing, right? Go finish your career in Arizona. In Arizona, right? Yeah. He already turned that page. You know, I, I think for Zeke, when you look at statistically, and, and we're looking at some highlights right here, this team has been built around him, but he's produced. So I, I get the production. I, the, the leverage is the word that we're talking about here. To me, I just don't think Zeke has a lot of leverage for two reasons. Number one, he's got two years left on his deal. It's not like yep. this is the last year of my deal um, and I'm making peanuts. Zach, Dak Prescott, the fourth round pick. Zeke was a top five pick, so he's making money. But the leverage thing really is about the offseason stuff. If you're, good, if you're gonna get a big time contract, guess what it's all about nowadays? It's about the guaranteed money. That's what the agents care about, that's what they report, it's what the players care about. Zeke has made it hard for them to guarantee him money because of his off the field behavior. That's to me the one thing that, that is, is really, takes the leverage away from Zeke. So are you saying that if this is Saquon or McCaffrey in the shoes of Zeke Elliott, same situation, two years plays for the Cowboys, they'd get the deals done? They'd think, have a better chance? I think they're not even having the conversation about the guaranteed money because they don't have to worry about that. Mm. If you're Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and you just hand this guy the bag and then all of a sudden he goes off and does something silly and he's sitting down with Roger Goodell again, now all of a sudden you look silly because you hey look look at the, look at his track record. So absolutely, when you're getting getting a big time contract like this, all of those things play into it when it comes to the guaranteed money. Not just the guaranteed money, but let's say we give you the money. The language in the contract will determine whether or not they can recoup it if you go haywire. Got you it. go to another concert and get overserved. What are they going to do? See, They've but this also but this also depends on how the Cowboys do with their first four games, right? If you look at their schedule the and record. who they have coming up. So they have the Giants, right. the Reds. Right. Is seal or the There it is right there. Esto, mira, este es el horario ahorita. No, but you have the Giants, you got the Redskins, the Dolphins. Those are potential W's there yeah. for them. Saints and Packers. then Saints, that one's going to be a primetime game right there. So if there is a time to unveil Zeke, it would be during the week four performance. Again, if the Cowboys end up you know, two and one during that stretch, okay, maybe there's a little bit of wild but I think yeah. it's all in the Cowboys' favor right now. I just feel like they're on this long road trip, mm. and they are laughing, giggling, having a good time, go to the Save Mart. They get their, their snacks, their chips. All of a sudden, Zeke is crunching really loud, and Jerry's saying, hey, Zeke, Keep it down, all right? I'm trying to drive over here. <laughs> and and I think that now they're they're um, comfortable in their awkward silence right now. It seems like a That's what I think. to me. This is yes, why it was so absolutely. So you tell me, you just saw the record. Let's say they go 5-0. and 0. 
If they go 5-0, and oh, is Zeke more likely to bend then because they're winning and, oh, snap, like I need to get back there on the field, they don't need me? Or is Jerry Jones willing to bend if they start 0-5? Oh, One of them's going to have to bend, and we might see those sort of situations. What's more likely? Somebody has to bend. They're in a stalemate, Nate. Who yeah, is Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's the ultimate uh, question of who will have the leverage then. If they go 5-0, and oh, it's the organization, the team, the offense. Playing do you, without do you think Zeke, Zeke if they're 5-0, and oh, he, you yeah, think he comes yeah, he'll, back? Yeah, he'll have he to consider it because you're losing money at that point. He's still in the contract. We yeah. have to keep in mind, he's getting fined as well. Now, if they go 0-5, oh, though, that's a different story. Jerry Jones could talk about them playing well without Zeke as much as they want, but this is a Super Bowl team. Like, let's not get that misunderstood. Yeah. They have a really good quarterback. This is a star running back, a wide receiver number one. And that defense, oh, man, is solid. So this isn't a team that they can play without Zeke and work out this contract the next couple of years. And Dak doesn't want to play without Zeke, but Dak wants to get paid exactly. too. And so yeah, it makes it easier for Dak. But to your point, if Zeke, if you're sitting there as a player, you know, number one, it's hard, all right? If you're sitting there watching your team, Go to practice. Play in preseason games. You're seeing Tony Pollard ball out. Nobody likes seeing somebody else do their job. Yep. So as a player, to see well, somebody else. Well, we saw James position, Conner, right, in right. Pittsburgh. He right. pulled out. But for Zeke, it's got to be hard to see that. But then also, you think about the fact that he's losing game checks. Yeah. Right? When the season comes around, those game checks, the preseason, you're not worried about losing that check. Right. But regular season checks, that hurts. And on top of that, they can fine him. That's what I'm he's saying. He's under yes. contract. Also. So you fine him, yeah. now you now you owe them money. So all That's of a sudden, money. they're winning games. Man, I want to be back with my boys, right. and I'm costing myself money. That doesn't make sense. I'm more with you that a deal, I think a deal won't get done until we get into the regular season, and the win-loss record sort of reveals itself and what this team can do, what Dak can do, what Kellen Moore can do, what that offensive line, that defense can do to get this team some wins with Tony Pollard. He's obviously a huge X factor. I don't see it shaking out. And I I think it's a true stalemate. I feel like we haven't really used that word on this show before, talking about the situation. But even the Jerry Jones sound bites, Nate, that keep coming out, he's talking to the media. It almost makes me think, and I don't have any inside information, that the two sides aren't talking even a little bit. It's like Zeke said, come back to me when you make me the highest paid running back or don't call me at all. And now he's not answering his phone because it's when you are dating someone and you break up with them and go cold block phone I'm not answering it mm -hmm. the ex-boyfriend finds a way to find other people hey Jenny can you tell Kay uh, I saw her right. they find different right. ways to send messages I feel like Jerry Jones and the Cowboys breast are using the media in that way to send messages to Zeke because Zeke isn't answering the phone well look what happened at yeah. a Jalen Smith press conference too he was talking about agents and how the agents maybe aren't doing right by their client so he's throwing out that message as well and all yeah. the messaging and you know that Jerry's out there answering those questions. He's not shying away at all saying, hey, this is private. This is something between both sides. Right. He's out there stating his position. Well, more on the Zeke situation. Of course, it is getting messy, but he's not even the only guy missing from his team. Seven days away from kickoff. That's right. We've got a